Can the brain grow new nerve cells at an old age? It was believed that between the ages of zero and five, your brain has the most flexibility and it's most malleable. That is the time that you have the most learning potential. But could we have gotten it wrong? And if we only use 10% of the brain, what can be lying dormant within the mind? And have we just unlocked the code to access the rest of the 90%? We'll be exploring this and much more here on MANA as we cover the psychology of renewing the mind. It was found that by and after the age of 26, we are pretty much set in our ways. And if we're going to change, it was most likely by trauma. But how powerful is habit and how much of life is truly in your control? How much is learned behavior deep within the subconscious and in your psyche? Imagine a fresh cloud of snow covering the ground that has been untouched. This is the mind. In that snow are tracks. These would be skis, footprints, even sleds. These are the connection ways of the neural pathways. The mind is a connection center. Your mind is a connection center. It's trying to bridge patterns, habits, and all things learning through the process of thought and connection. And in some cases, these connections and pathways are a habit loop. This is habit. It is a learned behavior. And the connection is the path in the snow. And this is your brain taking the path of least resistance. And what happens is that these paths become deeper and deeper in our brain and psyche until we behave, act, and react without thinking. These are the tracks in the snow and the pathways going deeper and deeper the more that they are used on the path of least resistance. And as we said, that is just habit. We didn't say if it was good or bad. We said that was learned. Example, there seems to be a correlation between the sensation of boredom and the sensation of hunger, which is a learned behavior. Get bored, go eat, and the dopamine from the food alleviates the boredom momentarily because of the pleasure sensory and the release of dopamine, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Emotion slash feeling slash trigger equals response. But instead, let's go with a destructive habit that's more harmful, like lying, addiction, and pornography, where a habit loop can be established but the person does not want to continue in said response. What hope is there for them? This is the subconscious. Imagine with me now an iceberg. On top of the water surface is only the 10% that you can see. Beneath in the depths is the other 90% that you can't see. That is the subconscious, the psyche. What gets tied into the subconscious is usually tied to memory and strong emotion. Again, we said it is emotion. We didn't say whether or not that emotion was good or bad. So what hope is there for the person who experiences trauma, such as PTSD, the victims of sexual assault, near death experiences? Are we expected just to relive the memories and the pains through our triggers? and through the brain's way of processing trauma and pain being nightmares and dreams. What rest and hope is there for the living? Now that was simply the psychology of the mind in relation to the subconscious habit and neural pathways. But what about the physiology? 
because it was believed that adults could not grow new neuron cells. But has science changed? So it has been found that an adult brain can indeed grow new nerve cells, the process by which is called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis takes part in the brain called the hippocampus. It is in control of learning and memory, mood and emotion. Neuroplasticity is a new field of research that as early as 2015, it was a belief that the brain was set and that you did not develop new nerves, new neurons, nor new neural pathways. But what is truly happening? And what do we learn by the fact that science got the brain, mind, and human psyche incorrect? We can bring it all together with one word, repent. In the Hebrew, there are two forms for the word repentance. One, to return, as in to return to God. Two, to feel sorrowful. And three, in the Greek, we find in the Bible that the word repent means to renew the mind or to change it. Science overall has merely caught up or confirmed what the word of God has already said in the Bible. The Bible already taught us and informed us that the mind could be renewed in the neural pathways and informed us about the brain's neuroplasticity through Romans 12 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and perfect will of God. And second, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is the spirit of God able to transform our minds, our beings, a heart, soul, body experience. So if you don't follow Jesus or believe in the Bible, you might want to repent and change your mind. Thank you for watching The Blessing Report with our show, Mana. Feel free to use the material in the video as an aid for edification and build up your faith with a Bible study for believers. Two books covered in this video talking about the brain and how the mind operates is the anatomy of the soul and the power of habit. But in terms of evangelism, remember that the mind is the longest way to the heart. Instead, witness by way of the heart, by the word of God, in the gospel of Jesus Christ and by way of the soul through the spiritual gift of prophecy. On this episode, we explore the psychology of the word of God in its ability to renew the mind. But what about pleasure, social media, and sin? In part two, we'll be exploring the psychology of addiction and how social media is making it impossible for you to follow God. So as we pray out, we remember that God, you are holy and Jesus has come to save us from our sins and ourselves if we repent and believe. For Jesus, you will return soon to judge us, to grant us either eternal life or eternal damnation. Forgive us of our sins and baptize us with your Holy Spirit so we can be born again. Mm -hmm.